It's Secure Digital Life, episode 15. This week, only I and me and me alone because Russ is off doing something, I don't know, productive. I don't know. He said he couldn't be, well, whatever. We're going to talk about certifications, and I know you love them. I know you want them. I know you got to have them. So hang around, and we'll talk about certifications. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm, so, I'm sorry, we, I was at a PG show. And I'm really okay. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> I think it's another day, it's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You, oh. Oh, you moved my, you put my camera over here. Eh, cut. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, th I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea at this point. All right. Here we are. Yeah, we were listening to all that cool music earlier, so I have to get back in the hyper mood and out of the lag down by the fire mood. But we want to talk about certification this week. And certification is one of those things that comes up all the time. Everybody jumps on you about it, and they want to know about it, and they want to know, should I do it? Should I not do it? And so it's starting to sound like sex ed class kind of thing. But it really ends up being a pretty important topic for cybersecurity and IT professionals and, and a lot of other people as well. I mean, you see this across a whole lot of industries. My sort of initial question for this is, what is certification? Because a lot of people, I don't think, we get asked this question a lot. What is certification? Why, why should I do it? And the answer is, it's a kind of currency for skills, sometimes. Uh, it, it means that you are able to sit down and take something that shows that you're able to do a specific task and take that out into the industry and say, okay, I can do this kind of thing. And that means that it's a currency that you can carry around with you. But here's the problem. Sometimes these things are just basically uh, letters you put after your name. And so there's a problem with that, in my opinion, in that you have to be very careful about what kind of certifications that you pursue. So are they necessary? Yeah, I absolutely think so. I think certifications are something you probably want to pursue at some point in your career. Now at that point, it's a moving uh, target. But at some point, you probably want to do that. Do you want to just put things after your name? Some people do. Uh, you know, it, it, if that's something you want to do, then fine, go ahead and do it. It's, if you can afford to do that and maintain it. Is it a substitute for documented work experience? These were all questions that, that uh, I had gotten in very recently. Yes and no. You're going to find a lot, of, a lot of answers like that. People say, is it a substitute for documented work experience? And notice how I phrased that, documented work experience. That's different than work experience. So I, it's not a substitute for saying, I have three years of work experience, so I went and got this certification. Uh -uh, not going to happen, never. But on the other hand, some of us have had jobs that had very strange titles. So, for instance, I had a job once that was called Check Processor 2. And it sounds really weird, but I was actually a mainframe operator. And I was like, could I call my job mainframe operator? And they were like, oh, no, we don't have a job. You'd have to go to yeah, the legal and HR and all this stuff. And so, you know, other than just going on a rampage in the building and leaving, I, I was stuck with being called a check processor too. But IBM and Honeywell and other mainframe services offered certifications that you could get that you could put with your name on your resume to show I actually know how to do MVS. I actually know how to do whatever, whatever, whatever. And that was something that people uh, were very interested in, especially way back when when a lot of these skills were not very well documented. So if you went on the industry even 10, 15 years ago, a lot of the skill sets people want today, like pen testing and things like that, a lot of companies, HR, didn't really have good job descriptions of those things. They didn't really know how those things worked or what they meant. So being able to bring a standardized document that you could carry from place to place to place, a currency, uh, that, val that had value, was a really nice thing to be able to do. Uh, uh, another question that people often ask is, I want to get into cybersecurity, so what certifications should I have? Uh, that's a good question. Depends on what you want to do, right? 
I mean, there's all kinds of things. Cybersecurity is now this catch-all phrase that refers to everything from network engineers to, you know, incident responders and forensicators and all those kind of things. So there's a huge spectrum of stuff out there that you might have to have. But if you do want to get into the field, sometimes the entry-level certifications are okay, and they're good ways to introduce yourself to topics. Other times, having just a certification with no real experience can be a kind of limiting factor as well. And there's certainly people out there that would look at you on a resume and they say, you don't, you've never done it. You can't talk the talk. And, and I used to teach certification classes. So I worked for several different companies that taught certifications, and I still work for one that does certifications. And, you know, you get people that come in and they have no background, no experience. And I don't necessarily mean they worked. But they don't play this stuff. They can't talk the talk. They don't know the game. And so having those letters after your name may or may not really bring a lot to the table if you just cannot get into the lifestyle, discipline, whatever you want to call it, uh, of the area. But you've got to have those skills, so get them. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Uh, where should you start? Well, here's how I tell people to pursue certifications. And it's just sort of my generic strategy for what something is. And I'm going to bring up a term for you now. R O I. ROI stands for return on investment. Learn it, live it. ROI is all about is something worth it. There are no certifications that, well, there's probably a few, but there are no, very few certifications. Let's keep qualifying. I'll hedge and hedge and hedge. That don't cost anything. Whether it's time, money, all of the above, some of them have to be redone and on and on and on. You have to think about, I'm going to pay for this. You may have to pay to get it. You may have to pay to learn enough to get it. You may have to pay more and more and more to keep it. Is that something you want to do? And is it worth it? So here's where I tell people to go when they start talking about certs. Go to the job sites. Go straight to Monster, Dice, whatever kind of job site you want to use. I don't care where you are in your career, where you are in the industry. That's where you go. And you look at the jobs that you think you could get. So if the job says 25 years of experience required, you probably can't get that job. But if it says one or no experience or one year of experience required, maybe those are uh, cyber jobs that you can get. So why not look at those? And then a lot of times on those jobs, it's going to say what they want and what they desire. So they have things that they must have and things that they would like to have. Like a real common combination that you see on entry-level jobs in cyber is A plus required, S plus desired. And you'll see that down at the bottom of those jobs. So if you're trying to start thinking about certifications, sit down with some of those job boards and look at jobs that you want and see what they're requiring for the jobs you want. Because that's, that's what's going to make it worth your while. Because if you go out and you talk to a place that's selling certifications, like training and all this kind of stuff, not that those are bad places and not that you should stay away from them, but they're selling something. You go ask them what you should get. They're going to try to sell you everything you can afford because that's what they do. But if you know what you want, it's just like buying cars or whatever. If you know what you want, you're going to get a better deal. So you've got to figure it out like that. Listen to Security Weekly. Listen to SDL. Send us questions. We love to answer questions and get attention. So you can send that stuff in, and we can talk about it on the show and a little bit about uh, the ROI of some of these cert cert uh, certifications. Yeah. So do you really need it? So another question that, that I always try to ask myself, because I do have a, a little bit of, uh, of what I call ink addiction. And I don't know if you've ever heard the term ink addiction, but it, that's how I got this like giant nude Alan Turing tattooed on my chest. Um, pe people go out and they get, I'm going to tear, I, if I was really cool, I would tear my shirt off right now and there would be a giant nude Alan Turing tattooed on my shelf. But I assure you, you don't want to see that. Then the show would be like rated some probably not suitable for human consumption or something like that. But um, you see people with ink addiction and they, they get tattoo after tattoo after tattoo, and that's fine. I mean, that's cool, and everybody mostly likes tattoos, or they don't, and either way is cool. But I've seen that with certifications. And I had a friend who had so many certifications that he had to actually have a flip-down pad on the back of his business card so that he could show you all the certifications that he had. And that's cool. I mean, it's impressive to see. And I mean, they weren't like rinky-dink certs either. They were like, wow, these are like super killer certs that 
a lot of people wanted to have that were very difficult to obtain. But the thing you need to remember is that don't start getting certs just for the sake of getting certs. If somebody's paying for it, great, awesome, cool. Let them pay for it and go have fun and get the shirt and learn something. But at the same time, if you're paying for it, here's the thing you need to remember. Most certs, in fact, almost all that are worth anything, have recertification and maintenance charges. So that means that every year you're going to have to pay some money. So whether that's to, uh, for CISSP or it's, to, or it's for a CCE or it's for a CEH or any of these things, you are going to have to pay a yearly fee. So you've got to keep that in mind because if you're in school and you don't have endless amounts of cash. Now, Paul has told me that, that they're paying me huge amounts of money here. So, like, I mean, I'm talking like, you know, wheelbarrow loads are waiting for me at the end of this road. So then I can go out and get certs all day long. But you maybe don't have all those kind of riches uh, at your disposal to just keep shelling out. The other piece of this is that you have to maintain them. And that's the worst piece. That piece really sucks. Um, for instance, I'll use the CISSP, a, a very coveted and, and highly touted certification. I, I, I'm not going to get into endorsing unless they pay me. You guys could pay me. I, I do like money. But uh, the CISSP requires that you complete so many credits of training, just like a lawyer, or a doctor, an accountant, all those kind of people have to have uh, annual training. And they require that too. And sometimes if you're in school or you're maybe not, you're underemployed, that's the term they like to use now for like, they don't pay me enough to do this. Um, those kind of uh, situations mean that you maybe can't afford to fly out to some nearby conference and spend a week there staying in a hotel, going to DEF CON and going to training sessions and all this kind of stuff. Or maybe you can. But all of those kind of certs require that. Some certs require that you retest. So for instance, the CCNA, that's a Cisco certification for, it's an entry level Cisco certification. That one requires that every three years you basically have to retest. So they're saying things change, new skills come along. And I mean, none of this is bad, mind you. I'm not saying that they shouldn't do this. I'm just saying that be careful because here's the problem. Start piling up certs. Now you've got eight certs and each one has got a 120 credit uh, per three year requirement. You got a lot of training you're gonna have to do. And yes, some of it can you know, overlap and you say, oh, I went to DEF CON, so I counted up for this and this and this and this. And we all do that kind of stuff and there's nothing wrong with it. It's not a violation or anything, but it does start to add up. Uh, the money starts to add up. Uh, I have two certifications that require, re that require recertification. So I have a CCE, which is a Certified Computer Examiner for Forensics. And I have a CCNA, which requires you to go retest. Uh, the CCE requires every two years, the CCNA every three years. So you have to retest. It means you take a whole, the whole certification pretty much over again. So a lot of that is, you know, directed study. So even though you may have all those skills, you may still have to sit down and focus on that for a little while. The CISSP requires you to get uh, training credits and you pay fees every year, and then every third year you have to put all that paperwork through and get it all reapproved. So if you're in school, that can actually start to be kind of complicated. In fact, I've had students who went out and got certifications, and then before they even managed to start their job, guess what? Uh, the next thing that happened was basically they ended up with their cert expired, and they're like, I have to recertify again. One other big caution, look at the history of recert. There have been certifications out there in the industry where they change without warning, really. They would just announce all of a sudden that there is a new test and you must take it. And that wasn't on a plan. And it was just kind of like, okay, here, a year and a half in, or I knew somebody who had one for six months and they announced, oh, the cert's no longer valid. You're going to have to take a new test because we've changed all this stuff. So those kind of things can really be daunting, especially to students or people that are at entry-level jobs. Now, I will, I will tell you, a lot of entry-level jobs will want you to certify and they will pay for it. So how do you get it? Well, there's a lot of ways to get certified. Uh, or certifiable or whatever you want to call it. I think I'm certifiable and you're getting certified. Self-study is, is the cheapest. So there me, self-study means that you can simply go out and you can buy some materials and there's a lot of free materials. So for instance, the free CCNA workbook. If you're trying to study for the CCNA exam, the free CCNA workbook is awesome site that's maintained by people that it doesn't cost anything to use. Uh, there are study sites for the CISSP like CC Cure. 
So Clement maintains that site. He's got questions. He's got practice tests. He's got all kinds of material on there that you can use to just self-study. Most certs will allow you to self-study if you just write it out and say, I self-studied. They usually will ask you, how did you prepare for the certification? So you can say, I self-studied. How about IT Pro TV? Uh, one of our sponsors. IT Pro TV has uh, a lot of videos about a lot of this kind of thing. So you can certainly get involved with things like IT Pro TV. Those cost money, but IT Pro TV is a pretty good deal. Check out Security Weekly site where they've got discounts to IT Pro TV if you're trying to get involved. But before you sign up for anything, ensure that that site really does have uh, that coverage that you want for that kind of self-study. Because like I say, most of these established certifications that have been out there for a while, they pretty much have uh, self-study materials uh, you know, available on Amazon, Kindle, free sites, pay sites, evil sites. Uh, there are sites that are, that are called brain dumps. Uh, and, I, and I will caution you a little bit about brain dump sites. Uh, what a brain dump site is, if you've never heard this term, is a brain dump is where people go and they put questions from the certification on the site. And people go there and read the questions. And so by doing that, they learn the answers to the cert questions uh, really quick. This can be pretty much a violation of ethics and, and stuff that you sign and whatever. So just be careful and don't get in trouble with brain dump sites. They can also be a horrific ripoff. Uh, some of these brain dump sites charge you money. So you, if you Google search how to pass this exam, you'll find all these brain dump sites listed and you go pay them $49.95 to be a member and then you find out that they don't even have any material about that cert, but they make sure that Google searches come up showing that they do. And then you've paid a bunch of money. So be sure you're getting what you expect. And you know, the more disreputable it gets, well, the more likely it is you get ripped off. So be very careful about that, that avenue. Be sure the stuff you're studying is current. Uh, a lot of, there's books out there and you go back and you say, oh, there's volume, you know, there's the current volume, there's volume two, volume one, volume, you know, whatever, minus one from five years ago. That may not be relevant to the current cert test. So always be sure and check your self-study materials that they're, they're the current cert or you're going to end up in a giant mess. And we had some people like that before who came and took uh, one of the boot camps I used to teach and showed up and said, well, I failed the cert. I was studying from the wrong exam, but I, you know, this person sold me all these materials. Uh, don't, don't forget community colleges. Uh, most community colleges that do tech uh, have all kinds of cert courses embedded in their curriculum. They may have a course you can take and take the cert at the end of it. Uh, Cisco Academies, yay, I'm a Cisco Academy at, at Roger Williams. And Cisco Academy provides uh, training materials for all their certifications. And Cisco's not paying me to say this, and I don't have to say it, but I really like the Cisco Academy stuff and use it myself. Uh, I'm not just the director of Hair Club for Men, I'm a customer. Um, there's also boot camps. And so boot camps is the thing I want to talk about for just a couple of minutes as I, I again go back to this ROI business. Here's the thing about boot camps, and I, I've taught them. And I love them. Everybody loves boot camps. They're, I mean, they suck if you're taking them. They suck if you're teaching them. But boy, are, is it worth it. Yeah. Uh, the reason I like boot camps is because if you know the material basically, and what you need is to step in and you need to get that material jammed, crammed, stuffed into your brain, uh, you know, with, with an auger very quickly, just so you can get through that test, boot camps are awesome. Uh, I, I've used boot camps myself. I've taken boot camps. I taught boot camps. I taught, uh, I've taught quite a few different boot I've taught CCNA. I taught CCE. I taught CISSP. All those different uh, boot camps I taught. And we would have rooms full of people. But here's the question. R-O-I. ROI comes back to haunt you right about that because boot camps are brutal expensive. Uh, they're often very good. So, for instance, another sponsor of Security Weekly is SANS. And we, we wouldn't be doing certifications uh, service without talking about SANS a little bit. SANS is probably one of the premier organizations. And I'm not getting paid by SANS. They don't even sponsor my show. I'm, I'm just saying this out of the goodness of my heart um, and my Alan Turing tattoo. Um, SANS uh, has awesome instructors, uh, including a lot of people that you see on Security Weekly regularly. And um, they really have great classes. And they have their own certifications, actually. So if you actually get involved with SANS.org, they have their own certs. They have their own master's degree. They have all kinds of stuff. So they compete with a lot of us, too. But they have really quality things. But are they cheap? 
No. Now they have all kinds of ways you can, you can do this. You can go, you can do, do service to the organization and get credits and things like that. But in the end, if you're a corporate person and you can drop five thousand dollars a week to go to a, to go to Miami, Florida, and take a class, awesome. Uh, the last SANS I went to was a class I was I was actually auditing for ISFCE. And I went to San Diego, and it was an amazing class. Rob Lee taught it. He's a brilliant forensicator. He's if John Mellon's the grandfather of forensics, then then I'm going to let Rob be the father of forensics. And uh, an awesome class. People learned a lot. They got great skills. They were passing their their certs like the GCFA or whatever. And cool. But is it cheap? I don't think so. So the ROI thing then becomes: What is this worth to you? Cisco calls the CCNA a $70,000 certification. I don't disagree. I know pretty well that if I get fired at the university this week, I can probably get on LinkedIn or some other service and say, oh, everybody save me, I'm desperate. I am a CCNA. I can probably get a job pretty fast. Now, if you, but here's where the ROI drops in. If you go take a boot camp to pass the CCNA, you have no experience and not very much knowledge, you, but, but they get you through it. You manage to pass and you start going to job interviews and you don't really know very much, you're going to have a lot of struggles. So practice, play with it, learn things, break things, become that person. They talk about in Security Weekly all the time. We talk about it all the time in class at school. You know, you've got to, you've got to get into this and it has to be a part of you. And that's, that's important. Now, so, so how does the ROI work for me then? The ROI to me is about what did you have to spend to get the cert and what do you have to spend to maintain it? So you need to make sure to take all that into consideration. If you self-study and it costs you 29 bucks for a book on Amazon, cool. The ROI is pretty huge. But on the other hand, if you're a sophomore in the university and you're not going to graduate for two years and you went out and you dropped $5,000 on a boot camp, well, I'm impressed because you got a lot of money for a student. So, you know, maybe you'd like to make a donation. Just make that out to Doug White at Roger Williams University. Um, but the truth is, is that if you can afford that, great. And if you can't, maybe the ROI is not really there because you're now talking about you're going to have a CCNA. It's going to be three years before you probably are looking for jobs, which means you're going to be right up against recertifying. Now, that may be fine with you. And it certainly sets you apart when you're interviewing for a job. And, and you know, the company's going to you, you walk in on day one and go, yeah, my CCNA is up. I need to recertify. And they're going to go, yeah, sure, that's fine. Just turn it into HR. We'll be good. So that's that ROI piece I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. So if you're somebody, and I've had people ask me this question before, should I borrow money to go get a certification? And my answer was no, 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 no. I mean, I'm, I'm a big don't borrow money for anything. I, I owe everybody. So, you know, don't, don't do what I do. Do what, do what I say. But the, but the truth is, is that you know, anything like that is, is, is an add to your resume, but it's also an add to what it costs you to maintain in both time, effort, energy, and cold, hard cash. Other certs. There are a lot of certs. I mean, you, you dive in the internet, you're going to find cert, 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 cert. Uh, there's weird esoteric certs that nobody even really knows what they are. There's dead certs. There's new certs that nobody's familiar with. The big thing, that's why I'll take you right back to where I started. Go, go to monster.com. Go to dice.com and jump on that and see what certs are hip, cool, and popular. I mean, there used to be a world where they were like, hey, nerds. Now they're like, nerds, they have money. So, you know, certs are definitely worth something to have. And they definitely become a currency that you can carry with you where you go. So how about a few certs then as we start to finish up? My entry-level cert list, and, and this is by no means comprehensive, and it's, no be, by, it's by no means an endorsement. It's just some certs that I thought of that you could look into if you're interested. Entry-level certs, um, A+, plus, N+, plus, S+. Plus. Those are from CompTIA. And they are very basic certs. Almost anybody can get them with a little bit of study that's interested in this stuff. You can definitely self-study for these certifications without much trouble. Jump right in. Uh, some of them don't expire, so that means you've got it. You'll, you could put A plus 
on your resume when you're looking at jobs and go look at dice.com and monster.com and tons of those jobs at the entry level say A plus required, N plus required, S plus desired and you'll see all that. So the more of those pieces that you put on there, great. But again, look at that ROI. Don't let that slip out of your view. Don't, don't start going, oh yeah, I could get so much more opportunity but then you suddenly shell out $15,000 and you're in hock and all this kind of fun stuff. Cisco, CCNA, CCNT, those are the two sort of entry level uh, gateway drugs at Cisco to to try to get you started down the road to being truly addicted to Cisco. Um, hacking and pen testing, the certified ethical hacker uh, is a cert I don't have much background or familiarity with. I've read through the material. I don't have that certification. It's kind of an entry level cert. It's, it's not this deep dive stuff that a lot of people are seeking because we get a lot of people typing that, I want to be a hacks or how do I do it? You know, and it's like CEH is not going to turn you into a hack or well, it might turn you into that. But I, but the, the point is that, you know, nothing wrong with CEH. a great thing to put on your resume. There are jobs that require it. If you want to work in pen testing, great. And it is entry level. Just don't get, don't get disappointed that it doesn't teach you how to break into the NSA and, you know, and, and steal videos or something. Uh, besides, you don't need a cert for that. All that stuff's been published already. You can get all the NSA hacks. Uh, forensics. CCE is certainly mine. I'm CCE number 30. I was the 30th person ever to pass that certification from good old John Mellon way back in the day. Hey, John, I hope you're out there and, and you're not dead or anything. Um, I haven't talked to him in a while. Uh, the GCFA is from SANS, uh, another great cert that was put together by Rob Lee. And uh, that's, that's an awesome class if you ever get a chance to take it. I mean, it's fun to take Rob's classes even if you're just, uh, you already are certified. Uh, you will def definitely have a good time. And finally on that one, audit and assurance. This is an area that's hard to get into for a lot of people, but from ISACA, I-S-A-C-A. -S -S -A, it's all this stuff's on the wiki, so if you want to look it up. The CISA, CISM exams, a lot of people looking for that. So again, if you see those certs, on monster.com, dice.com, or wherever you want to look for jobs, LinkedIn. But a lot of times when you see those job descriptions, they are going to have certifications. And that can lead you to where do I want to be? And it also can mean you can start looking at what the ROI is. But every time you think about certification, that's one of the things you should think about. Uh, another time, another, another show, because I'm running out of time, because I could talk forever without taking a deep breath. Uh, we will talk about uh, the warm, warm waters of university experience with graduate degrees, but uh, that's for another day. So thanks for tuning in to certifications. If you've got questions, be sure and post them on any of the sites, and we'll really actually answer them. See you next time.